Hey, it's your boy, Future Dave, out here recording a new bumper because he had to inadvertently split the last video into two parts because it was like 40 minutes long. Marty keeps rubbing on my microphone stand. Stop it. No, we gotta kick you out. No, we're kicking you out. You are cute. But you pollute. Yes, I had to change the last video into a two-parter mid-editing because it was becoming like 40 minutes long and I figured that's an insurmountable thing to have to edit. Plus, no one's gonna wanna sit here for 40 minutes on YouTube for one video. Like, hours and hours, sure, but 10 minute increments, I could stop anytime. So yes, this is part two of my top 10 hardest monsters to summon in this game that just are not worth it. I figured I would just take this time to do a small correction with number 10 in the last part. Yes, uh, the arrival. I did say that he gains a thousand attack for every link monster used to make him, not link materials. Uh, my brain has a great way of reading things it's not read before and just sticking words that don't exist. Feels bad, man. However, as a Yu-Gi-Oh player, we all know that we none of us can actually read, so that's perfectly acceptable. All right, we're chugging along here. Number five, Machina Force. 4,600 attack. Wow. Now that, all of these cards are big number. Wow. It's almost like big number doesn't matter that much in Yu-Gi-Oh. Go figure. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned by the effect of Commander Covington. What the hell is that? This thing. I, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever seen this card before in my entire life. There's probably a reason for that. And that's, it doesn't do anything. You just, you pay a thousand light points in order for this thing to attack. So it's a big tune. Must be to balance that 4600 beat stick. And as an ignition effect, you can just send this thing from your field to the graveyard. This dumb beater that you worked so hard to make. Beat stick. Summon Machina Soldier, Machina Sniper, and Machina Defender from your graveyard. Wow, that seems oddly specific. Why is that? Well, we already know the monster isn't very good. Maybe, maybe we need to look into how you make it. What was that weird card we just mentioned? Commander, not a Machina card, has the effect. You can send those three dudes that I just mentioned face up on the field of the graveyard to summon your big stupid beat stick. Beat stick? Machina is a solid deck. Imagine sticking this thing into it, which is not even part of its archetype, just to make your dumb big beater. I heard through the grapevine, this one was a pain in the ass to get. Although I can't be quite sure. Your pain gives me strength, Kieran. Kieran told me that this was an absolute ridiculous replay to get. He actually wanted to do it in a duel. Um, Machina are just really not super well equipped to summon this awful thing because the three monsters you need to get on board to do it, again, like those reactors, don't really do a hell of a lot. So you gotta really go out of your way to do it. I did think the Infinitrax uh, wedged in here too was kinda cute. <laughs> it's at least a, a way to bring uh, bring some real Yu-Gi-Oh to the deck, and he's he's got one of them in there already. He's 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 just slowly chugging away, just trying to get as many of these on board as he can. Just feels really awkward because, like for instance, you know, here's Sniper. He doesn't do anything. These are all just bricks. And like honestly, I I I'm pretty sure Kieran could have won at this point. He's just stalling so he can summon the stupid monster, and like. His opponent is decidedly barely doing anything, and he's got all this nonsense. <laughs> I can see why he was so upset. And bonus points for actually using the flip effect to get Commander Covington. Not gonna lie, that's the cheese right there. Oh uh, yeah, here's where you just overlay this thing and make Dora, right? Just <laughs> do all that work <laughs> just to make a rank 10. See, number four is a damn shame that it's pretty lousy because it's pretty cool, like from a nostalgia standpoint. It's also one of two cards on this list that have something to vaguely do with that dumb original movie with the Anubis guy. Blue Eyes, Shining Dragon. Level eight light dragon monster with the following effect. Cannot be normal summoner set, must be special summoned from your hand by tributing one Blue Eyes ultimate dragon. <laughs> what? Gains 300 attack for each dragon in your own graveyard. That's cute. When a card or effect is activated that targets this card, quick effect, negate that effect. Sweet, it can infinitely negate all the stuff your opponent is ignorantly throwing at it. However, it has no protection against just board wipes, destruction, battle, and you must have gone through some stupid hoops in order to make it, or spent a lot of life points. Whatever you did, 
was really dumb. Basically what it comes down to is Blue Eyes White Dragon isn't the most consistent thing in the world. F***ing idiot. However, what it does, it certainly does. Play big dragons. You do not need to shove this thing in there to make one extra harder to make dumb big dragon. You're already doing that. Way too much. Sure the thing's got decent self-protection, but you also have to play Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon in your extra deck. Like that's just so janky. Best case scenario, this is like the cheesiest 10 ye tech ever. <laughs> Which is actually kind of cool. But anywho, let's play this stupid thing. Beru Eyes Shining Dragon. At least it's pretty searchable in a Blue Eyes deck. You gotta at least give it that. Now I'm curious to know how he gets the big boy on board. Oh, there you go. Using the Anaconda. That's a cute way of doing it. All right, number three, I'm sure some of you guys have seen this one coming. Neos Wiseman. Neos Wiseman should be a fusion card. Why it's not, I will never know. I think even in the anime it was. I guess Konami thought they should balance this card by making it a main deck effect monster, despite the fact that it is a fusion of two monsters from two completely disparate decks, so the least they could have done was at least make it easier to make, because you are certainly making a janky, janky deck just to be able to have the option to make this thing. Much less play it. But anyway, what do? Cannot be normal summoner set, must be special summoned from your hand. Stop it. Not everyone can be... Dark Sage, I guess. One face up Elemental Hero Neos and one face up Yubel. Like I said, two things that have literally nothing to do with each other except for the fact, my anime. <laughs> Neos is either in Neospatians or Elemental Heroes. Yubel is in her own deck, its own deck, their own deck. But at least this thing, once you manage to somehow finagle it on the board, cannot be destroyed by card effects. That's something. And then at the end of the damage step, if this card battled, hit your opponent for some direct burn damage equal to the attack of the monster this thing fought and gain some life points equal to the defense of the monster this thing fought. What is that? So you managed to mush two decks together that don't go together, all to make this dumb thing, just so you can make a beat stick that can't be dark hold. Cause who cares about that life point gibberish that it does? And at 3k attack, Oh boy, was this thing not worth the effort it was to make. So let's watch one of my subscribers struggle with it. That should be fun. Here's my buddy Woobles. He's got a channel himself, uh, so I suggest you guys go check that out. I will post a link, have it uh, uh, like a name of the channel here floating in the screen for you to see. Um, I was super impressed with this replay because this is some serious, serious six Sam nonsense and props for using the uh using the ai function in edo pro to at least have an opponent even if they don't necessarily do very much as opposed to just using the test hand function i did say that they could do that but this is a, a, another another solid way of just having your having something on the other side just possibly throwing cards at you um i can't necessarily say I can follow all of this because it's a lot of just nonsense, but he plays Saruja a lot. That happens because <laughs> he's just digging for the cards he needs. I thought this was really super clever because, you know, like I said, <laughs> Wise Man is is a weird fusion of of a non-fusion fusion of two decks that have nothing to do with each other. So so Woobles here was like, you know what? Mixing Neospatians and, and Mew Bell is a stupid idea. That deck doesn't function, so I'm just gonna not do either and play six Sams and just put the three cards in my deck and just loop this nonsense <laughs> until I just get all of them on board. <laughs> it's actually clever as hell. And it's just super funny because it's like, he could have won eight times over after all this nonsense. He's almost decked himself out, but nah, you gotta go for those style points and get that stupid Wiseman on board. And he still can't find the, he can't find the U-Bell. Just gotta keep digging. Just gotta keep digging. <laughs> It's in here somewhere. I only got four cards left. Where the fuck is this stupid thing? Uh, I believe in you. I believe in you, Woobles. Just keep making Saruja after Saruja until you find it. There you go, boy. You did it. We can all go home now. This was... This is just a... 
<laughs> this replay is fucking fantastic. I absolutely love this kind of cheese. And it's it was really clever of him to think outside of the box in order to get our wisey boy here on board just with this absolute nonsense. And he's just, this is how you go even further beyond. He's still going. He's not just going to settle for making the thing. He's going to settle and make a board. It's not a great board, but it's a board. Like, it's got a couple negates. I'm, I'm impressed. At this point, your opponent's best way of winning is just to see if you can last, like, until the guy decks out. I am I am wholeheartedly impressed. Go check out his channel. This <laughs> is nonsense. And, and he uses his effect just to, for the win. Oh, perfect. All right, you original Yu-Gi-Oh! movie that's not the season one movie, but also not Dark Side to Dimensions, which I can't remember what you're called. Pyramid of Light? Is that actually what the deck was? The, or the deck? The movie? It was, was it Yu-Gi-Oh! The Pyramid of Light? Anubis played this thing. Thenian, Thenian, Thenian? The, the Great Think. Thenian the Great Think is a stupid monster. 3,500 attack. Sweet. Big number. Like everything else on this dumb list. Cannot be normal summoner set. Big surprise there. This card cannot be special summoned except by paying 500 life points when, uh... Andro Sphinx and Sphinx Talia? Talia? Are destroyed at the same time. But this thing can be special from your hand or deck, so that's at least cute. You don't need to draw it. When this card is special summoned successfully, you can pay 500 life points to increase this card's attack by 3,000 until the end of the turn. Bigger number. That's really bad. It's incredibly disrespectful. Okay, so you manage to get these two Sphinx on board, which are already a pain in the ass because you need the Pyramid of Light to even get them on board. And then you have to figure out a way of blowing up your Pyramid of Light so you can blow up these two things on command and unless you're, I don't know, a torrential trip. A lot needs to go right just to set up the ridiculous scenario that there is to make your dumb big Sphinx. All for a giant beat stick that doesn't do anything. Hardest to summon? That's not worth it. You see where I'm going. And then we got a replay that's just really hard to watch because there is no fun way to making this thing. All right, Chibi Gohan. He's, he's, Chibi decided to go for the, 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 the replay and it, and even with no opponent and he still has to do this silly waste a bunch of time cheese and it takes him like eight turns in order to just set this up. Like I said, this is a painful replay to watch because it's just this ridiculous nonsense for him to get on board what he needs to play this dumb freaking thing. Congratulations. <laughs> now, I did, I do think that maybe he could have, you know, made the deck a little more consistent, a little faster by playing some more modern cards, but I gotta give him, I gotta give him the style points for trying to play this with mostly cards that would have been available at the time. That's a, that's a cute little touch. All right, our dishonorable mention is Supreme King Zark. This 4K beater fusion pendulum monster has an absolute wall of text because it has both a pendulum effect and a monster effect, both of which are kind of okay. However, what really does make the card a pain in the butt to make is the fact that it is a fusion summon of four dragon monsters, one pendulum, one synchro, one exceeds, and another fusion. But like I said, its effects aren't so bad. When it's played, it nukes the board, it can't be destroyed, it can't be targeted. So yeah, it's a big beater, it's got a lot of self-protection, it's got some cheesy thing it does when you when you get it into the pendulum zone if it gets killed somehow. It's not awful. It's just a bit of a pain in the butt to make. So that's why it's a dishonorable mention. It in of itself is okay. It, you're putting a lot of resources into making it. It's railroading the strategy too much. That's why it's only a dishonorable mention. Because he's okay, he's just a pain in the butt to make. Replay time. All right, Ryan sent me a couple of replays. Um, this one's the most interesting because it's basically like, if I open the God Hand, I can actually do this with, with some level of consistency. And the fun thing about your about your uh, Pendulum Magicians are some of them count as parts of uh, Zark's material. Like, uh, I believe Harmonizing is one of them? No, it's uh, this one right here. Ah, crap, go, stop, pause. Oh, right here, uh, this, it says, uh, this card is always treated as a synchro dragon. Okay, so this is another reason why Zark is only an honor a dishonorable mention because uh, Pendulum Magicians are uniquely tooled in order to make them. It's like they're supposed to or something. So like you don't have to get all of those extra deck guys on the board. Um, it's still clumsy, but it's at least 
doable. So let's keep going. Ryan still needs to get, I believe, the fusion on board, which is why he uses Butthole to make that. And then he uses, what is it, Chronograph in order to actually make the Zark. And he goes for game. Congratulations, Ryan. You did it. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to MetaMat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. All right, number one is the most pain in the butt that I chose to put on list. There are more, trust me. Watch the other one. You probably already did. Fucking idiot. Exodia Necros. Exodia Lacrosse. Exodia Necros. <laughs> this level four dark spellcaster monster has the following effect. Cannot be normal summoner set because of course it can't. Must be special summoned with Contract with Exodia, a wonky spell card. Cannot be special summoned any other way. Cannot be destroyed by battle or spell or trap effects. That's a very odd protection. Okay. Once per turn during the standby phase, this card gains 500 attack. Okay, so just slowly gets stronger. Interesting. Destroy this card if any one of the five pieces of Exodia aren't in your graveyard. Called by the grave will absolutely decimate your Exodia Necros strategy. Okay, so those five pieces of Exodia and the fact this thing is called Exodia Necros clues you in to exactly why this card is so wonky to make. Contract of Exodia is a normal spell card that says if you got all five pieces of Exodia, the forbidden one in your graveyard, you can just special summon Exodia Necros from your hand. Ew, you gotta draw it. So it's basically a ritual monster, but it's not because this is a really old card. So back in the day, Konami wasn't comfortable with making ritual like monsters use like graveyard stuff for their materials. So like they just made them weird effect monsters instead. All right. So you got to get all five pieces of Exodia in your graveyard all to just make a 1800 beat stick that uh, that can just be removed from the field by monster effects. Its protection is actually pretty good given how old the card is. It's just really not worth it. If you're playing an Exodia deck, you're not shoving this thing into it. You're just gonna win with Exodia. Like if they're in your grave, you're trying to put them back in your hand. I don't know what you're doing. I guess you could say it's a plan B kind of card, but we all know that adding plan B type stuff to your deck is just a way to make it inconsistent and bad. Um, especially because you don't really have a good solid way of getting to the stupid spell card. So yeah, replay time, I guess. And last but not least, we got Forks coming in hot with the zero effort replay with the test hand function. <laughs> Although he's done some, he's done this really, really silly thing. And this is how he's getting, this is how he's getting the Exodia piece in the graveyard, your advanced ritual art. That's super cute. I guess you might as well. And then summon this stupid Megalith Ouch. Yeah, super slick. I love it. And that lets you get the Exodia head and then uh, make make the stupid thing. It's, uh, congratulations, Forks. You played Exodia Necros. <laughs> However, can we get Fs in the chat for uh, Forks not playing Necros with Exodia Necros, if you're gonna play a ritual deck, because uh, that's the obvious and only choice you have failed me, sir. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this list. It was a lot of fun to make. I haven't had this much fun doing one of these in a long time. This one was cool. I'm glad that we can share a couple of different cards in the last one, so that's both kind of relevant. Thank you all to my subscribers that helped me get those replays. You guys are the best. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the men who will, I'll see you guys over at the other channel. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Oh, hey losers. What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Want to watch something else? Hurry up and choose one of these. Ugh. When are you going to make a choice? This year would be nice. <laughs>